Hello, this is um, a video that we're going to start talking about uh, layering in Vixen 3. This is hopefully going to be the first video in a multi-part videos as we walk through several uh, different ways to utilize layering in Vixen 3. Layering's been around for several versions now in uh, Vixen 3, and um, so this is the first video to actually show some more in-depth examples of how to use it aside from the documentation that's already on the Vixen website. So let's get started here. There's a there's a layering docking window here that's um, where you actually set up and configure the the, the high-level layers. Uh, this may or may not be visible in your setup, depending on whether you've used layers or not before. And it may be in multiple different places because of uh, how the docking works. This is an, a dockable window, just like all the others. You can move it around and put it wherever you want. If yours is not visible, you can come up here into the View menu and actually click the Layer Editor window and click the check mark here. Make sure it's sec selected here, and then it'll turn it on. And then you can, you know, say move it around wherever you want to in a dockable fashion. So let's get started with the basic of uh, intensity overlay layer. This is one of the most uh, common layers that you will probably use. It's one of the more simple ones to talk about as well. So let's let's start with an example. Let's take an effect and we'll drop one on here. And this is just, you know, for whatever reason I chose the butterfly effect, no particular reason. So if you start out with these two on these two pixel trees here, you see you have two full brightness effects moving through the the butterfly effect. Now, um most people probably have realized that you can come in here and you can adjust the intensity control inside of the individual effect. Many of the effects have this type of um, uh, control on there. So you can see there that I just adjusted it. Now those two effects are ramping off. I can go in there and you know flip that around and then um, you can see that they're ramping up. Pretty straightforward here. Works great you know for individual effects or you know on two of them here where you want the actual effect to change its um, configuration. But if I actually go in here and spread these apart now and, you know, stair-step them, you'll see now that the, that brightness control actually still just controls that directly on each individual effect. So they, they pulse up individually. But what if you actually wanted them all to ramp up together in that stair-step fashion, starting at the beginning over here and ending with full ramped on over here? You can't actually do that with this configuration because it's controlled at the individual effect level. So this is where layering comes in. So I'm going to go back to my layer docker here and I'm going to add a new layer. And then by default I'm going to go in here and change it to intensity overlay and I'm going to give it a name. And for simplicity form I'm just going to name it intensity overlay. That creates a layer and gives me a place to actually leverage it. And they stack up here in a layered fashion. The default layer is where things go that are not part of a layer, and then they start layering from there on up. I can add one to many of these in here. I can add or remove them. And we'll talk more about that as we get into more advanced uh, videos later on. But for the portion of this, now I'm going to actually take a pulse. I'm going to drop it on this group above the the two of these that contains these two effects and I'm going to line it up here and as you can see this is just a simple pulse effect and it acts like a pulse effect when I first drop it in there nothing fancy going on here it's in the default layer as uh, to by default to begin with you can see that there in the layer or you can actually look at it here it's selected as default but I'm going to actually move it to the intensity overlay layer now you'll notice that um, no longer anything happening in my preview. This is now a modifying effect. It's no longer a primary effect. So it's looking for something to modify against. I don't have these other two selected, so nothing's going on right now. So if I select all three of these, now you can actually see that that, uh, that ramp there is actually affecting both effects evenly now. It starts at the very beginning and ramps up over it. This one here, when this effect starts, it starts with this basic part of the intensity here and ramps all the way up to the rest of them. This one ramps up to the portion here where it quits and it goes away. So this now allows me to control the brightness of multiple effects at the same time. This is very useful for fading in or out a section of your show or making a group of effects do a ramp up and a ramp down. You can change this curve, you know, just like 
you would for anything else, uh, you know, in the editor right here, we go in here, we could add another point here. I can bring this up, bring this down. And now when I look at all of these together here, they're doing the ramp up and ramp down following along the brightness curve of that pulse effect. So you can start to see where this gives you a, a lot of um, flexibility in controlling things. I can add another effect in here onto the end of this one here. And you know we can make it red for no particular reason. And then now you see when I select all of these, you know that effect changes over to the red and it still handles the brightness along that as well. So everything works in conjunction there. So there's a slight variation to this when we actually go to analog or the string-based um, discrete items. So if uh, this here's a tree line of mini trees here, they're um, uh, they're all conventional string-based um, lights. There's, so there's red and there's a green and a blue string. You can see that here. You know I've got them set up as discrete. You know with the three colors that they actually uh, use. So now if I want to do layering on this one here, I don't have a brightness curve for this guy here. It never was there. There's no you know no feature of the effect to do it. So how can I actually make this guy ramp off? Well, I could actually just transition this to a pulse effect, and I could do that. Wouldn't uh, would be the exact same thing. But I can also use layers to do this as well. So I can take and drop a pulse effect on here, and um, take and put this into the um, intensity overlay layer, and you'll now see that that red is ramping up. Again, this is the same thing as what a pulse would do. But I could actually take and let's take and um, switch this over to something like a chase effect. So now I have a chase effect on here. It's red. It's chasing across those. This guy here is now going to be in the, whoops, get the right one here. This one's in the intensity overlay. This one here is actually still in the default layer. If I put the two of them together, now you see that the, as they chase across there, they're getting brighter as they go. The chase effect, you know, is now being controlled by the brightness of this pulse effect. You can also um, add into this uh, an interesting twist to this. I can drop another set level on here that is the color blue. Now you will notice that the chase is walking across there in red and getting brighter. But the, the layer of the intensity overlay is not affecting the blue at all. It's because this is red, so it mixes with, with and applies to the red in the chase, but it is ignored for the blue in the, in the set level here. So now I've got um, a effect there where it's actually coming across. The red is getting brighter as it goes across and not affecting the blue. So there you can see some of the power of being able to leverage the intensity overlay layering in Vixen 3. Hopefully we'll have some more videos showing the more advanced features of some of the other layering types coming along soon. Thank you.